I realized in the video where I actually put the LEDs in the first gen Tacoma headlights, I caught you guys the absolute worst installation video angle possible. So I put the stock bulbs back in and I'm gonna go over today how to install it, get you guys a better angle. Also do a little bit of modification to maybe the headlights themselves and these uh, chrome trim bar things here. I don't know why I keep hitting the truck. That's what we're gonna do today, guys. I hope you enjoy it, stick around, and uh, let's get right into it. So to get you guys the best angle this time around, I'm gonna take out the air intake box, which is held on by one, two, two maybe, I think uh, 12 mil bolts. So I'm just gonna take those out and then I also have to disconnect the hose here and disconnect this hose right here. I'm trying to do too many things at once. This little clamp should be a 10 mil, I think. Yep, and we'll also have to disconnect. Is this the map or the mass? Put it down in the comments. Either way, it's hard to get off. Okay, there we go. Just had to say nice things to it. And now we've got this giant air box out. How about this camera angle, huh? Finally. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this back a little bit and pull this connector off of its housing. We can take this rubber casing off. It has a little clip. You just push down and pull it to the side and then this should allow you to pull that back and easily pull the bulb out. If your bulbs are still good, I recommend holding on to them and just keep them as spares. As with most stuff on my cars, whenever I try and, or whenever I disassemble, I try and always clean parts as I go, as it's just a good opportunity to get all the angles and make sure the parts thoroughly cleaned. So I'm just hitting this rubber with some simple green to try and get all the grime off of it, make it look a little bit more like it did back in 1998. Just clean as I go. It makes tackling the whole project a lot easier, so you're not trying to clean and detail the whole car all at once. You just, I mean, assuming you work on your cars a lot like I do, uh, you just kind of clean as you go, and it just amounts up over time, and you end up with a much cleaner rig, and things become easier to keep clean over time. That's a big, big piece of it. So I went ahead and ordered myself a set of these Basla 6500 Kelvin LEDs. Go ahead and break open the old box. We've got two 50-watt LEDs here. These again are 6,500 color temp, so they're gonna be a little tinge of blue to some people's eyes, but uh, at least for my eyes, they look pretty pure white. And then Bosla calls these the LED drivers. It comes with one for each bulb, and that just basically connects in between that three prong, and it connects to the LED bulb on the other side. Before we go ahead and install the LEDs, I wanna make note that I did have to modify this piece on both the passenger and driver's side. So I had to cut off right here. This used to extend up about half an inch. To make this a bit more clear, I've grabbed the grommet and the Bosla bulb. So what I do is I take the wire and feed it through. And now the goal is to basically get this ring around this fatter section, the fan and the cooling section of the LED. Should look something like that. And you can see we've made room for the cooling fan on the backside and it's cooling fins all the way around. Now it gets a little tricky because we have to, there's three fins on this bulb and you have to seat it in correctly. So you pull back the tab again, get this cord out of the way. And the trick with this is as you put the bulb in, you have to start to put this, this retaining clip back down. You'll kind of see what I mean once you're doing it. It might actually be easier to just invert this whole thing to put the clip back on. I finally got the clip seated, so now I just need to invert this rubber casing back, which is actually kind of tough to do now because I've removed all the grease and oils from this dirty rubber casing, and now it's actually clean rubber and it's a bit harder to push over. Next, we're gonna take our driver and we're gonna take the smaller pin side and connect it to the same side or the uh, only cord coming off of the LED itself. If you remember, all we have left is our three prong which just goes right into the factory harness right here. Some dielectric grease just to keep the moisture off the pins. And now we can go ahead and just plug in our LED. And that is it. I suppose if you wanted to be extra secure, you could then wrap this in electrical tape just to make sure it's extra watertight. I don't know if I'll go to that extent. Actually, one more thing we have to do is just kind of zip tie this guy up somewhere so all this isn't just kind of dangling around. So now if you've done your setup, I guess the same way as mine, this is what it should look like. 
I've just run the wires up here and zip tied it to the stock wiring harness out of the way. So now all that's left is to put the air box back in and do the same on the driver's side, just rinse and repeat. Now when you get to the driver's side, what I recommend here is that you at least undo this front bracket for the battery. That way you get a little bit more play with the battery, giving you some more room. And then you can also just lift this cooler, which just sits on this little slip bracket here. You can just lift it right out and set it aside, which buys you lots and lots of room over here. Now we have the LED on the driver's side installed. Also, same application, cleaned up the grommet and everything, added dielectric grease. And now we should be able to turn them on. The color tap on these lights is such an improvement for a vehicle this age. I think having this nice white 6500 Kelvin really brings this car into its 2023 age. It doesn't have the old halogen style bulbs in it anymore, giving it that 90s yellow effect, which I know I like to keep this truck 90s, but when it comes to safety at night and being able to see things, it's kind of something I'm willing to negotiate on and take this car into a newer age with some newer technology. So I've already had some experience driving with these on the road. It's phenomenal. It is tenfold better than the halogen bulbs that came in these headlights. And another note too is it's not blinding. I know sometimes when you put an LED or an HID bulb in these non-projector style housings, these old fashioned reflective housings, they sometimes just become this ridiculously bright light that just everyone thinks your high beams are on. But these Although it's brighter and whiter, it doesn't really change the output and it still looks like an OEM bulb as far as what I'm seeing from this angle. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't think oncoming traffic is gonna have an issue with these. I get loads of questions from you guys in the comments on Instagram about these headlights and it's kind of funny. I, I didn't actually know if they were OEM or not. Just searched this little number down here and come to find out, at least to my knowledge, they are OEM headlights. I would have guessed that they're aftermarket after all this time, they would have been swapped out, but OEM headlights still in this 1998 Tacoma. I did replace the sides with these clears. Uh, just got rid of that orange reflector. I don't know if I love it or not yet. Still kind of on the fence, but these headlights, they tend to uh, fog and haze and yellow a little bit from oxidation. So probably every four to six months, I have to go over this and polish it and get it to be a little bit better and clearer. So with the new LED bulbs, I figure now's plenty good time to hit them again and get them looking as fresh as possible. Maybe not worth all the work it took with uh, elbow grease, but this is how it came out. They're definitely in better shape than they were. It just probably doesn't show it on camera. That's pretty good for just some hand polishing. If I had a drill bit with a little foam applicator pad just to be able to consistently hit the whole thing, that would be the ticket. But for just a little elbow grease, I'm pretty happy with that. Something else I wanna do to clean up this front end and just bring this whole thing together and make it look a little bit cleaner is fix up all the rust on these, I don't know what you call them, bumper eyebrows or rusty eyelashes but I'm constantly having to get rid of the rust on these things. It just builds up more and more to the point where I was thinking about just maybe throwing some black vinyl wrap over them. Thoughts, comments, concerns on that one? Maybe hit it with a wire brush and see if that will take out some of the rust. Put it down in the comments. What's the best way to keep these things from getting rusty? I feel like lately all I've been doing is cleaning up rust on both cars. So I got a little carried away here and I decided to take off one of the eyebrows and look how rusty that is on the inside. I just, like I said, I don't wanna keep this bumper forever. So I think I may just, I have some leftover black vinyl wrap and gloss that I may just wrap over this in the meantime to try and put a little makeup on a pig while I'm at it. And then uh, that'll carry me over until I get ready to do a new tube bumper on the whole front end. Can't decide yet if it was really worth all the effort, but uh, got this side wrapped and uh, I won't show you up too too close because the edges are terrible for not having to deal with the rust anymore maybe it'll look good it's quite the contrast of gloss black to this old faded 1998 bumper plastic but I don't know I'm, I'm just out here trying new stuff so give me a thumbs up for that comments below what do you like better rusted out stainless 
gloss black. After a couple hours, I can honestly say that it, it does look better with the blacked out brows, but the wrap job is so subpar, it's not even funny. There was so much rust on all the edges that I'm sure this is gonna peel up in like a week of being in the hot sun. Not to mention, I don't have a work table, so I ended up scuffing this side. Probably can't really see it, it's right there. I scuffed the vinyl wrap down to the metal, and then on this side is even worse. I was just about done, and I totally ripped an entire edge right down the center. So it's just kind of flapped over right now. In the sun, it's definitely gonna peel up and show the silver underneath, so. Would I do it again? No. Does it look okay? Sure. So we gave the first gen Tacoma quite a facelift today. The bulbs look so much better. Definitely the best part of uh, today's install. And clearing up the, the housings was definitely necessary. The brows, you know, it was a fun little mod. It's, it is what it is. It was definitely half-assed. And uh, I just, I wanted to do something different with the little bit of vinyl wrap I had left. I'm still greatly looking forward to getting rid of this chungus of a, a front bumper and doing a nice tube bumper set up with a winch and make it look a lot more like a 4x4 Toyota. So, you know what? I'm happy with it for now. Thank you guys so much for stopping into the channel. If you're new here, think about subscribing and comments below what you thought of today's video. I will see you in the next one. Keep elevating. Adios, my friends.